Good afternoon, everybody. If I could uh, invite you to come join us, we would uh, love to have you to celebrate our wonderful retirees. Thank you to uh, Richard and Cindy and our food service staff for a delicious uh, spread today. Thank you. As always. Well, good afternoon. My name is Peter Noonan, and I'm the superintendent of schools here in the City of Falls Church. And today, it's my honor and my privilege to recognize seven wonderful retirees who have served our school and our community for many, many years. In fact, we've quantified how many years they've served, and it is a total of 159 years when you total them up. Each person that we're recognizing today has in excess of 20 years of service to public education and have truly dedicated their lives to the betterment of our kids and to our community. FCCPS has seven retirees this year and four of them are here today with their family and their friends sitting up here in front at our round tables. You might see some flowers, you might see a tablecloth, you might see some civilized uh, food up here. So welcome, welcome to all of you. You are among the reasons that the City of Falls Church Schools is one of the finest systems in the United States. So thank you again for you uh, being in your service. Before we get started, I do want to um, thank a few people that did make tonight's event possible. And again, I want to thank our food services folks, um, FCC TV, who will be videotaping today's events, our custodial crews who set up and will also tear down and clean up later. And I'd also like to welcome some of our special guests who are here uh, this afternoon. We have uh, three school board members that have joined us. First, we have Lawrence Webb. Lawrence, where are you? There he is, Lawrence. We have Greg Anderson. Greg, welcome. And Shauna Russell. Shauna is here somewhere. All right. So it's, it's hard to say goodbye to these treasured longtime employees. Our schools are truly better because of the magic and the work that you all do every single day on behalf of our students. There are three people who are unable to be here today. Uh, and I'd like to recognize each of them, if you'll indulge me. Um, first is Ray Epps. Many of you know Ray Epps. Ray has served on the FCCPS maintenance team for 21 years. He knows the ins and the outs of all of our FCCPS buildings, especially Thomas Jefferson. And I know he'll be missed there because he could always get things working that work, weren't working well. <laughs> Second person is Liz Germer. Liz Germer served as our Director of Special Education, Student Services, and Early Learning. She officially retired at the end of March and is already enjoying her life in Florida. I can picture her on a beach right now somewhere. Liz is an advocate for children, especially our youngest, and she led the development of Jesse Thackeray Preschool. Eleanor Hawksworth is a history teacher at George Mason High School. She has a reputation of putting the story in history and for teaching students how to be good members of the Mason community. She started the annual tradition of recognizing Mason alumni and staff who are veterans in November. So please join me in applause for these educators and professionals who were not able to be here today. So now for tonight's four honorees. We've invited special colleagues and family members who will tell us a little bit more about each of these individuals. And I'm looking forward to learning more about you throughout this evening. First up to tell our first story is Nancy Hendrickson to tell us a little bit more about Maria Rodriguez. Nancy. Wait, go ahead, you go first. Okay, good evening. My name is Nancy Hendrickson, and this is Sita Chansabat. Yeah. And it's our honor to speak on behalf of Maria Rodriguez this evening. Maria started with Falls Church City Public Schools in 1992 as a substitute custodian, working in all three schools for three years until she officially started her career here in 1995. She worked at George Mason for 10 years and was happy to move into Mary Ellen Henderson when we opened the new school 13 years ago. 
Maria has enjoyed working with many different people over the years, teachers, students, and coworkers alike. As I inquired about Maria, a common response has been that she always has a smile on her face, a hard worker with a very positive attitude. When asking for stories about Maria, Eduardo Molina laughed and told me that when she started working in the early 90s, George Mason was under construction. There were a lot of people working as temporaries at that time. As part of the construction, they were cutting trenches in the hallways or removing carpets or floors from other rooms. Back then, what is now the TLC was the sixth grade pod and the space was divided by partition walls. There was dust everywhere, and Maria thought the only way to get rid of the dust without it flying through the air was to use water. So she hooked up a hose in the custodial closet, and she went along happily hosing everything down. Well, there were no drains in that space, and she figured most of the water would just evaporate, but that was not the case. So the entire floor was wet, and the next day, the sixth grade teachers were really upset to find the entire space covered in water. Mrs. Hockenberry, in particular, was not very happy, as she had hamster cages in her room, and the joke used to be that her hamsters learned to swim that day. <laughs> so I have worked with Maria for 25 years, and when we start, both of us know English, <laughs> saying, you know, English is as our second language. So um, we did not speak English the same, and we don't speak the same language. So Maria uh, trained with me at TJ, and it was a little hard for us because we cannot speak English, and she, you know, we don't know what to say. But we use sign language to work together as the team. So we make it. We are very happy. I am very happy to work with her. Maria is a hard worker, and you know, I'm gonna miss her and happy retirement. Enjoy your retirement and happy with your family. Thank you. Thank you. I became especially close to Maria when Mary Ellen Henderson opened and my office moved into the building. She would be cleaning the lobby when I arrived at 6.30 in the morning after switching on the coffee pot to make sure that all of us in transportation had fresh hot coffee. She has always taken good care of us in transportation and we will miss her bright sunny attitude. Maria has been blessed with three children and nine grandchildren. Wow. She is looking forward to spending more time with her family to include her husband of 43 years. Very nice. Very nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. How are you? All right, Eduardo Molina is up next. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Eduardo Molina, and I'm the custodial supervisor for the uh, Fort Church uh, School System. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about Mario. Um, Lately, it seems that I've been doing this every two, three years, and I still don't get used to it. Um, <laughs> and I realize that we're getting old because some of my crew is leaving. Uh, but um, every time I, I get in front of you for, for an occasion like this, it's, it fills me with joy. And then it's a little, it, it's kind of sad to me because I know that they're going to leave and then they won't be here with us anymore. But. Um, Mario is kind of, I'm happy for Mario and it fills me with joy because he's worked hard and he's arrived to this stage of his life in which he is, um, in which he's, he's going to be able to spend time with his family and, and be with all of them. Um, and he's done a lot of demanding work, so he deserves it. Um, 
he's he's been with us since officially since 90, 1998. He started working with us before that as a substitute custodian, and he's been dedicated to his job since then. Um, he, when he came when he came to work for us as a substitute custodian, he proved to us to the management that he was a hardworking person. He was responsible. He was uh, he had good work ethics and habits, and so he became part of our team. Um, when it was time, um, he he was working with us over at George Mason. When he, when the construction was over at George Mason, we started filling up position. I mean, Mary Ellen Henderson. And we started filling out the positions for Mary Ellen Henderson. We started looking for the best person that could be the lead person, the supervisor, and the one to guide and motivate the people to work in this building. And we bit within the best choice was him. So he's been here at Mary Ellen Henderson since it opened. Um, can't remember the year, but he's been here. Um, Mario has is, Mario is left his mark in every space in this building. Every floor that you see that looks shiny and clean, um, every classroom that you walk into, uh, he touches it directly or indirectly every time. Um, through the years, we move boxes, we arrange classrooms, uh, we've done a lot of different things, um, we work together, um, we move. We move off. We played kind of musical chairs with classrooms because we move boxes, we move furniture, and then as soon as we finish moving it, we have to move it all back again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, or we go from one space to to other space. We move some stuff to one place, and then we have to move it to a, another one. And that's been our life since we've been working here. Um, we work hard, and there is in a space besides working at. at M MEH and being the one responsible for the maintenance and well-kept building. He has also been working in all the other buildings. Um, we worked at George Mason, we worked over at the central office, DJ, Mandani, so he's touched every place in this, in this school system. Um, I think Omario has family now. We've been working together for about 20 years or longer than 20 years. And um, we started working, we, our relationship started as co-workers. Um, and then we became friends, and after that, we've been like family. We've been at each other's homes. We've been at the special occasions for our families, quinceañeras, things like that, <laughs> weddings. Or, um, so we're kind of part of a family now. Um, I'm gonna miss him a lot. Um, and then through all the years, through all the years we, We've been working together. We develop respect, confidence, and support for each other. I know that while he's here, I can trust that everything is going to be good, and he's going to do everything. I don't have to worry about anything. Um, I think that Mario's been waiting for this for this moment for a long time. <laughs> um, he could be he could be very happy because. Directly or indirectly, he touched every every place in this school system, and he can hold his head up high and be proud of everything he's done for for Falls Church. Um, I think that he's also happy because he won't have to deal with flooding restrooms uh, <laughs> anymore, with um, emergencies. He won't have to be picking up himself from the ground when he sleeps on ice or snow. It's kind of funny to see him getting getting mad when he falls on it. So he won't be doing any of those, uh, those things. Um, now all he can do is travel, um, find a new hobby, finish and finish goals or, or deals that he might have. And whatever he does, I wish that he succeeds and that everything goes according to the way he wants it to be. Um, if he decides to move back to Colombia, it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of good to all of us because if we go visit, <laughs> we have a free tour guide right here, <laughs> and so we could do that. Um, I always think that it's sad when when a person leaves after working with with me for so many years, but they deserve it. They work hard. They l left half half of their lives in this place, um, so. I'm glad that he's 
he's going, he's going to spend time with his family, with his grandkids, with his wife. He's going to be traveling probably back and forth in, to, to Colombia. Um, and he might have some goals, and he's going to do them, and he's going to be successful. And I wish that he does that. Um, but I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, because you've been my support, you've been my friend, you've been my coworker. You saved me a lot of headaches. And so um, enjoy your life, the new chapter in your life. Spend time with your family, have fun, and then come visit us and stay, stay in touch. Next, we'd like to invite Darcy Hood to the podium. Um, hi, I'm Darcy Hood. I'm an English teacher at George Mason and one of Bridget's uh, grateful co-workers. There's a lot of us in the room tonight. I get to be the one who speaks. Um, many others are here as well. Um, we want to include voices for the people who didn't get to come. Um, so we put together a little video montage. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It's Dean Pratt, congratulations on your retirement. Uh, school's gonna miss you greatly. You know, high school for me, many moons ago, had uh, a lot of ups and downs, but one positive every day was seeing your uh, smiling face walking down the hallway and the love for literature and English that you instilled upon me that still flows through me to this day. Uh, you know, I can't, can't find me hardly uh, without a book in my hand and that's uh, mostly due to you and what you taught me through the years. So thank you, congrats, uh, go relax, you've earned it. Best part about working with Bridget is talking with Bridget about books. She's the most well-read person that I know and it's so fun to hear her take on what she's read. Um, she also loves uh, the students and um, has a great rapport with them. Um, it's really fun to hear stories about what Mason used to be like and what her time teaching on the reservation was like as well. Um, and just as a bonus, one of my other favorite things that Bridget says is, um, can't we beam them up and do something about them? So Bridget, we're gonna miss you. The best yeah. thing about Dean Pratt is she's caring and very supportive and she's helped me a lot through these past few years that I've had her. Bridget, it has truly been a pleasure to work with you here at George Mason High School. You're a great teacher and a great role model and a great team player. You're always willing to take on any class the department needs and you've done a great job organizing Poetry Out Loud. I love your open door policy. You have students working with you after school and you welcome me in to chat and give wise, calm, practical advice. You're gonna be very missed and I hope that retirement treats you well. Send me an email when you've finished reading Marilyn Robinson and let me know what you think. Please stay in touch. All the best, Angela. The thing about Miss Dean Pratt is that she's invested in her students and their success and she's always willing to go the extra mile in order to see that they achieve the best that they can be. And she's always willing to just brighten anyone's day up. Every conversation you have with her is just like, the happiest moment. She just makes everyone stay better, and I'm gonna miss her so much next year. And yeah. thank you, Mrs. Dean Pratt, for being my teacher back in 2004, 2005. Uh, I remember Gatsby from that class and the literary terms project and uh, Julius Caesar video that I made with my friends. Um, and thank you for finding and returning a copy of my feed book report. That is still one of my favorite books. Uh, and I've read it. I've read it several times and listened to it on tape. Um, and now, as a colleague, uh, I know you as Bridget. So, thanks, Bridget, for uh, always being upbeat and and putting things in perspective here at George Mason. Have a great retirement. 
This is Beau Fay from the Mason class of 2001, and I want to say my most everlasting memory of Miss Dean Pratt is of her eternal patience. I still remember in 10th grade one day, we had a student literally crawl out the classroom window right in the middle of instruction. Miss Dean Pratt just kept on teaching as if nothing had happened. We were all mortified. 10 minutes later, when that student had the nerve to knock on the door to ask to be let back into class, not only did she let him back into class, but again, she kept on teaching as if nothing had happened. She was completely unflappable, unbelievable. In the 12 years that I've been a teacher, I've never seen anything quite like it. And I wanna say from all of your former students, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts and we wish you the happiest of retirement. The best thing about Ms. Dean Pratt is that she's so considerate towards her students. She's always willing to help them whenever they need her help, um, academically especially. And oh, I had her during my freshman year and my junior year. She's a wonderful teacher. She is humorous even when she doesn't try to be, and I love her for that, and I'll miss her, you're the best. Part of working with Bridget is um, the way she makes you feel valued, no matter um, what the issue is or what your idea is. Um, she always has a good word of advice. Um, she listens. Uh, I know that's true for me and for so many other people that work with her, and I know that's also true for so many of her students. Um, I'm going to miss you, Bridget, and I'm going to miss talking to you and getting your advice. Um, enjoy the beach and the mountains, and know that I will be on one of those doorsteps sometime soon. All right. Uh, the best thing about Bridget is her passion for teaching literature and writing. Uh, I had such a great time in her classroom when we worked together. Um, her uh, willingness to allow students to show their knowledge in a variety of different formats. Um, just overall, a lot of good stories, a lot of good conversation, and uh, just interesting time. Bridget, I hope you freaking enjoy your retirement. Have fun. Bye. Congratulations, Miss Dean Pratt. What a career. You have really touched so many lives, mine included. I cannot express the type of uh, impact and energy that you have had on my life and really almost everything that I've done. Uh, you've, you really cannot even imagine the type of influence you have had from my, uh, my career in Hawaii working on uh, volcanic ash and uh, not to mention my riverboat captain days uh, along the bayou. Miss Dean Pratt, uh, if I could give you one uh, send off, it would be to live your life and love what you've done because you deserve every single minute of your retirement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bridget is one of the most warm, welcoming, enthusiastic, and energetic people I have ever met. When she's not teaching, her door is always open from the time she arrives, which is much earlier than most of us, to the time that she leaves, which is much later than most of us. She's genuinely happy to talk with everybody who enters. And I love going into Bridget's room because every wall and cupboard is filled with students' creative work from her many years of teaching. There's so many things I'm going to miss about Bridget, but near the top of the list is her incredibly eloquent speech that she delivers every year at our Poetry Out Loud competition. Bridget, George Mason is not going to be the same without you. We will miss you so much. The best thing about working with Bridget is that professionally, she'll say yes to anything. This has been great. She'll teach any class, any group of students, work on any assignment, try any new project, and that's been a real boon to our school and our department. So to Miss Dean, my 10th grade English teacher, and to Bridget, my colleague at the English department, I wish you all the best in your retirement. Thank you for all that you've done for Mason. Hello, Miss Dean Pratt. This is Nathan Hom, Mason class 2001, here to share a quick thanks and congratulations on your retirement. Uh, I'm one of many hundreds, if not thousands, of students who passed through your classroom over the years and your love of literature and English language uh, and the way you imparted it on us I think made high school all that much easier to look forward to. Uh, it's something I've carried with me throughout my career finding better ways to communicate and share ideas and even to take joy in the quieter moments sitting and reading a book uh, something that I think grounds us all here in this ethereal plane uh, I'm reminded of a Jack Kerouac quote that I think may be pertinent here. 
what is that feeling when you're driving away from people and they recede on the plane till you see their specks dispersing? It's the too huge world vaulting us and it's goodbye, but we lean forward to the next crazy venture beneath the skies. So please enjoy that next crazy venture. You certainly deserve it. And I hope to see you again on this plane under this big shared sky. Congratulations. All right, Bridget, we love you. Come on up. No way. Over there. That was incredible. <laughs> I don't have any words, which is a miracle. <laughs> I'm going to give you the microphone anyway, because no. you have to say something. Okay. Congratulations. Well, I can only say that uh, being here and in this community and just thinking about how wonderful it has been all this time, um, there's always good people here. I don't even know how that happens, but there's some kind of magic, and it's just great. So thank you so much, and horribly, I probably... Well, it's so kind when people say that, that you affected their lives, but, you know, it's, it's nice to know. So, thank you. All right, Lisa Allen and Heidi Lang are going to come up and speak about their colleague. Please welcome them. Hi, I'm Lisa Allen. And I'm Heidi Lang. Okay, we are honored, humbled, and baffled to be here tonight. Honored because we've been granted this opportunity to celebrate a colleague who means a great deal to us. Humbled because the colleague we're celebrating tonight is one of the most beloved and respected teachers on our staff. And baffled because we still don't know why Mary Kelly thinks we're going to let her retire on June 18th. <laughs> Mary has been an educator for close to four decades. She began her career working at St. Mary's School in Alexandria, spent time teaching at Holy Trinity School and St. John's Developmental Center, and also served as a special education teacher in New York before coming to Thomas Jefferson in 1986, where she's taught fourth grade for the last 32 years. Throughout her time at TJ, Mary has been held in high esteem by her colleagues because she is the epitome of professionalism. In addition to completing a master's of science degree in special education, she committed to the rigorous process which resulted in her gaining national board status, while at the same time earning a certification as media library specialist. In between all of that, she helped to collaboratively write fourth grade curriculum for math, language arts, and social studies. Some of us in here might even know her by the name of Mary Curriculum. <laughs> She has arranged annual visits with NBC4's meteorologist Tom Kiernine for our fourth graders, and for many years she was our um, TJ Chess Club liaison person, guru, whatever you want to call her. She is committed to her profession and continuously explores new ideas and teaching strategies. A ride in our carpool with Mary wouldn't be recognizable without her quoting a scholarly article or current study. Her colleagues look to her for advice and guidance. She served many years as the team leader for fourth grade and as a perennial member of the Staff Concerns Committee. She builds relationships with her students and their families that last far longer than the, child, than the year a child is in her classroom. It's not unusual for Mary to have dinner with a family or student from 20 years ago. Recently, one of Mary's former students sought her out and requested that she serve as a mentor to her while she completed her student teaching. She has been nominated more than once for Teacher of the Year for good reason. Bottom line. Mary has always stood out because she knows that teaching isn't simply about collecting data or implementing a, a CAN program. Teaching to Mary is as much art as it is science. But Mary Kelly is not all about business. <clears throat> In the classroom, her spirit of fun and cheer looks like a silly song or two, music playing as students enter the classroom, a chance to explore the curriculum through a mini project, or one of her legendary headstands when everyone manages to get their homework turned in. 
Her room is organized, purposeful, and always memorable. Her spirit of fun extends beyond the classroom walls as well. She's been in charge of organizing birthday breakfasts at TJ for as long as we can remember. And if there's a special celebration, you can count on Mary to be all in. Raising money for breast cancer awareness on Pink and Denim Day? Count on Mary to be decked out. Is it time for the festive holiday sweater contest? Mary will likely be there, jazz hands waving. Sudoku to solve? Mary's on it. Grapes to be stomped? Mary will do it. She can teach you how to do the downward dog while waiting for copies to be printed at the... <laughs> or she'll regale you with a Beatles song um, for any occasion. In fact, if you research hard enough or ask the right questions, you can hear stories about Mary bringing an alligator foot to dinner or tap dancing at the Xerox machine. You might even find a video of a Kelly family flash mob. <laughs> she is thoughtful, patient, caring, and wise. Because of these qualities, we are willing to forgive her desire to have everyone take pictures in crazy poses. Family is at the heart of all Mary does. At home, she's a loving, loving daughter to her father, Dr. Shreve Spittler, who's with us tonight, a devoted wife to her husband, Jack, and a loving mother to her sons, Sean and Thomas, and her daughter, Colleen, and most recently, the delighted grandmother of Claire and Bridget. Oh, and she's also mom to one spoiled Airedale named Hurley as well, although she'd probably tell you, she's not spoiled. <laughs> Fostering a feeling of family at school has always been important to Mary. 23 years ago, I was, when I was lucky enough to be placed on the fourth grade team, Mary was there to welcome me with open arms and a few questions. Questions like, how do you feel about Dirty Dancing? The movie Dirty Dancing. And if any of your team members have something in their teeth, would you tell them? And finally, when you need support, you know where you can turn, right? Her warmth and caring made this first year teacher feel at home. This is what Mary does. She is one main reason why TJ has had the warm family-like culture it had so, for so many years. <laughs> Colleagues have come and gone, but they have never been far away from Mary. Emails, phone calls, holiday cards, and the occasional drop-in at TJ are not uncommon for colleagues who have left. She always greets them with a smile and inquires about what has been going on in their lives and the lives of their family. And no speech about Mary Kelly would be complete without an Irish toast. So here's to you, Mary, all that you are and all that you've helped so many others to be. As they say in Ireland, may God grant you always a sunbeam to warm you, a moonbeam to charm you, a sheltering angel so nothing can harm you, laughter to cheer you, faithful friends near you, and whenever you pray, heaven to hear you. To all the days here and after, may they be filled with fond memories, happiness, and laughter. Mary, could you please come forward? A lot of people have been asking me recently, how do you teach for 38 years? That's a long time. Well, it starts up at the top. And um, in 1986, Dr. Warren Pace, our iconic uh, superintendent, hired me. And he, he was wonderful. And I have to thank him, as well as the uh, superintendents who came after him. Um, Mary Ellen Shaw, Dr. Roberson, Dr. Berlin, Dr. Jones, and our newest superintendent, Dr. Noonan. I thank all of you for hosting me here for such a long time. Um, when I got here in uh, 1986, um, every grade level had just three teachers. And uh, I was replacing um, Marion uh, Reber Sanders. And she had been teaching for 14 years in fourth grade. And she was very good friends with Carla Strickland and Emily Florence, who were 
nice enough to welcome me because she was, they, they had such a long relationship. And, um, but they welcomed me with open arms. They were my wonderful mentors. They taught me about the Falls Church way. And that's basically what made TJ and Falls Church such a different and very special school system. And I will always be grateful for that. Um, any good school system uh, relies on its leadership. I have to thank my first principal, Bill Thomas, uh, who hired me, and the successive principals as well, Greg Alexiu, Trudy Taylor, who was nice enough to come out tonight, Bob Palermo, I saw him earlier, and Principal Swanson, our newest principal. I thank all of you for your guidance, for your leadership, for backing up your teachers. We appreciate it so much. And I have to include our assistant principals, Amanda Davis and Rob Carey as well. They're just wonderful. We're very fortunate to have them. Uh, somehow, Falls Church seems to just hire the, the nicest um, teachers and staff members and colleagues. I don't know how they do it. But we have a wonderful staff, and we're there for each other, and we're all there, all you know, completely for the students. And I just rely on them so much. It's just so nice to see everybody every single day. And that's everybody, including our office staff. We have fabulous secretaries and um, our uh, nurse, and just everybody's working in there. I don't know how they get their job done. It seems like every time they get to work for about a minute, the next thing you know, we're, there's five people in there wanting something and interrupting them, and they get it for you always with a smile on their face. And it's just, they're the, they're the first people that any visitors see, and they just are so nice and calm and cool with everybody. Um, we also have a wonderful um, custodial staff. David Morales is the lead uh, custodian at our um, at TJ, and he leads a wonderful staff in not only keeping our building beautiful, but also he uh, forms relationships with everybody, including the students. And you can always see him singing and lifting people up, and it's really beautiful to see. Um, I could never have done my job without my paraprofessionals who are in there to support the students and their special needs and to help me out. Uh, Lynn Pravat was my uh, paraprofessional for many, many years. And then when she retired, Deborah Newman came in. And we worked together for many years until she left and uh, became the principal secretary. Um, I then had the fabulous Catherine Wigton and then Jan Patrikis, Patrikis and um, currently Yoki Jeffers, and I'm just so grateful for all of their help and support. But we, um, you can't do anything really well without your team, and my fourth grade team members are here tonight, and I have lunch with them every single day, and we have a, a great time supporting each other, talking, laughing, um, and doing things outside of school as well. But they're wonderful, and I rely on them so much, and I love them so much. I also have to thank Shelly Skamra and Lisa Allen for being our team leaders. So grateful for your leadership in the fourth grade team. But you really can't do your job if you don't have a great carpool. And my two carpool buds, we laugh, we cry, we hold each other up. And if you didn't know this, if you have any problems at all in Falls Church, we have solved the problem. So Dr. Noonan, if you, you know, if you have any issues, we've taken care of it. Nobody ever asks us, but um, <laughs> we have it all figured out. <laughs> uh, um, but that's, that's all a big, big, big part of it. But the other part of it is uh, why we're here. It's for our students. And some of my current students and some of my former students are here tonight. And they're wonderful. And 
part of that is because they come from wonderful families. The families in Falls Church are here for the school system, and I'm just so grateful for the many, many students that I've gotten to teach, and their families as well, gotten to know them, and they're just, it's just wonderful. It's just a great spirit, and I'm so appreciative of that. I, I just feel so blessed that I became part of this school system. And also, I'm very, very fortunate to have a wonderful family. Um, my dad and his wife are here tonight, and my dad always encouraged me to follow my dream, which was to become a teacher, and he really encouraged me, and I'm so appreciative of that, Daddy. Um, my sons couldn't make it tonight, but um, they wish that they could be here. They uh, are, are working and couldn't make it, but um, my daughter, Colleen, is here tonight. And I'm really grateful that you were able to make it. My college sweetheart uh, has been through all of my education, all of my ups and downs. I may have even influenced him to become a PE teacher 25 years ago. Um, he works in Fairfax County. And uh, I married Jack 35 years ago. And I couldn't do it without you either. I love you so much. All of you are a blessing in my life. Thank you so, so much for everything. I, I will miss everybody. Wow, what a, what a great evening and what a great celebration. And on behalf of the students and the faculty, the administration and the entire Falls Church community, thank you all for everything that you all have done for decades of service to our community, to our students, uh, and, and, congratulate, and I congratulate all of you on reaching this important milestone in your life. I do hope that you'll come back and visit us soon. Um, but enjoy your retirement, but know that we're here and we miss you and we do hope that you'll come back and now that I know you have all the answers to all of the problems, <laughs> I need to get your phone number and I'll put you on speed dial. <clears throat> anyway, if we could have one last uh, round of applause for our incredible honorees tonight. And I'm going to ask the uh, four honorees that are here this evening if you'll join me up on um, the steps and we can get a picture. And uh, the rest of you, we just want to say thank you so much for coming out and being part of this. And enjoy the rest of your evening.